Hi everyone, welcome back to the Watch Insider. Uh, my name is Brian and thank you all for logging on. We've got a special guest this evening, CQ, who's been on the, uh, not on this show, but other shows previously. Every show but this show. Really? Every show. Oh wow, show. Yeah. I've got a legend on the channel tonight. World um, first, world first. So uh, Tim is um, away this weekend, you know, much needed uh, time Recharge. off. So um, for those of you that are expecting a uh, in-depth walkthrough on the technical uh, specs of these watches, we are gonna <laughs> do our best. No, no encyclopedia, no thesaurus of uh, horological words tonight. Yeah, but we've got so we've got a great lineup of watches. Um, so I wanted to bring a really cool assortment of watches on the show, all of which are under the six thousand dollar price point, all of which are pre-owned, and I just think. Um, Really cool watches that you may not uh, be thinking about with all of the hype out there, but uh, watches that deserve some attention nonetheless. I think so, yeah. It's a great light, in fact. Yeah, well, I, you know, I try my best. Um, and as always, guys, please feel free. If you have any questions while you're watching the show or there's anything that you want to discuss on the channel, that's what Wednesday night shows are all about. So feel free, ask the questions in the chat, and CQ and myself will do our best to answer any and all questions. Why don't we get started with a quick wrist check? What do you got on tonight? Ooh, tonight I have on, where am I? I'm over here. The Breitling Avenger Black Blackbird, excuse me, 48 millimeter. Um, I love this watch ever since it first came out. I've been a big fan of the Avenger series. This is nice, it's thin. I could do anything in the whole wide world I want with it, so I do. And that's what I'm going to. Awesome. What you got? So, so I am going to, so they can get a better view this is of pretty it. Cool, actually. Yeah. So I, you know, I've been, um, you know, I've been wearing it off and on for a while now. Um, but it's a watch that I have not worn on the show before. So this is actually a new brand called Norcane. Um, this is a 44 millimeter. Uh, it's called the Freedom 60. If we, maybe we can get a closer camera shot so they can see the coloring in the dial. So the brand was actually founded by a good friend of mine, Ben Kufer, out of Switzerland. Um, his family has been in the watch industry for decades, and you know I've known uh, Ben for an extremely, extremely long time. So when he told me that he was venturing out. Um, and uh, going to start his own brand. I obviously, you know, was supportive from the beginning. Um, so uh, another uh, friend of mine that he's working with is Ted Schneider, whose father, uh, Teddy Schneider, was um, the former owner of Breitling. Oh yeah, I met Teddy. Cool yeah. Guy. So um, really cool brand. Um, all of the watches are sub four thousand dollar price point. I'm going to be bringing some of them on the show sporadically to show off. Uh, this is my personal watch. Um, so it's got a cream dial. Um, you've got applied indices, syringe hands, you've got like that vintage super luminova look when the watch is loomed up. Um, and uh, if you show the side of the nameplate right there, um, which is really cool. So UN has actually um, okay. done something similar. If you zoom in there, um, I actually have my son's initials engraved there on the main plate with uh, his birth date, oh, I which I thought that. was um, you know a really cool feature and something cool to add. So. Um, you know, that. really nice watch, and one of the other reasons why I picked this one is because when they, you know, when they were doing the initial um, renderings of the line, this watch actually had a white date window, uh, and I said that like it really broke up the dial, and they ended up um, switching and going That's through, um, you know, multiple different iterations of the date window to get the color so that it matches the dial, uh, and I thought that was really cool, and uh, you know, I picked the watch because you know maybe I had a little bit of a uh, Little input there. A little bit of input. You, you know what's so cool about that though? There's so many brands that a little date window color change would like make the whole watch pop. Like bigger, bigger brands, and they just don't think about it. Yeah. But with that that cream date window, I love this watch. I saw you had it on. I think you had. It's got like, that vintage strap. Ago. It's yeah. like a 1960s look. And you can tell it's just really, really quality piece, and it just looks like a great watch. Which I think all brands need to start. I think some brands go very experimental, go crazy. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with making a really, really nice. And he comes watch. from a manufacturing background. So he's able to make like a really high quality watch, I think, at a good price. Um, and what I think a lot of consumers don't realize is how hard it is to match uh, the date wheel to the dial because it's very a very hard. different process that goes into both. Um, so when you see um, a date disc that's you know an interesting or unique color like this and that the, the wheel itself matches the dial, uh, it's not an easy process and very often there's lots of iterations. Um, one watch, for example, that I was actually somewhat disappointed about by the color difference was the new AP uh, 15202 white gold with the salmon. Mm, um, yeah, I mean, have I, a little... you know, I should have had a picture brought up, but again, I didn't know I was gonna be talking about it. But the the actual, I mean, it's not technically salmon the dial, but the there's a slight, you know, um, 
color difference that you could be- see it, between like, the dial itself and the wheel. The wheel is like much more salmon than the dial, and it catches the eye. And I just think it doesn't. You know, I wish that. Uh, they had matched it a little bit more to the dial. It's a, it was the little things that made the whole package come together. And definitely, it's something that, that's why I think many um, collectors don't even like day windows because they don't even want to have that option. It's right. like a nice, clean watch, and maybe they would enjoy a date if it mm-hmm. matched. But so many times you get a black dial with a white white date window. And, and just like, throws oh, it off. It, yeah, just, oh, why not? Quick question from the chat. Beauty of Scent. Hi, Brian. Where is Tim from Watchbox taking the day off? Tim is taking some much-deserved time. He's away for uh, the holiday weekend. Uh, but you know he's going to be back on the show with me next week, so not to worry. Uh, and guys, um, please uh, you know keep the questions coming. Um, let's see here, and oh, a couple shout outs. Hi, Edward Ledin, The Watch Lounge, Marco, um, Randy Allen. Uh, you know, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, why don't we start with some of the watches on the table? So as I said, we've got watches here under the six thousand dollar price point. These are um, you know. Predominantly sport watches, but you know some of them are probably a little transitional. Why don't we start with this? So here we have um, a Gerard Perigo Laureato. So this is a watch that I've talked about uh, on the show previously as a watch to, you know, a watch to look at if you know if you're thinking about a Nautilus, you're thinking about a Royal Oak, and you're you know somewhat hesitant about the price point and or it's just extremely difficult to get. I really think the Laureato uh, deserves more attention. Um, you know, they give you the ability to transition between bracelets and rubber straps. I'm a big fan of the look of the watch. Gerard Perigo has a lot of watchmaking heritage. Um, and, you know, overall, it's got a nice fit and feel. It's a little bit bigger. It's more in line with the size of a Gen 2 Vacheron. So it's going to be 42 millimeter. It's very thin. And you know what? Um, you know, I just think GP doesn't get enough love. You know, they're, you know, they're, they're in-house chronos that, well, it's not in-house, but like they're Lamania-based chronos that are, you know, essentially the same movement as a Paddock 57. You're beautiful. Um, and I just think even the, the Loriota relaunch was done. Um, you know, they should be on more wrists. Yeah, I think it's definitely, I mean, you could put a lot of brands in that category, even JLC and, you know, so many others where they're producing really, really great quality product. But I don't know if it's the marketing or if so many maybe consumers are just so uh, hesitant right now in terms of value, what do I get into, what do I spend yeah. my money into? I think right now we're in a very commoditized state um, in the industry where everybody's wondering how much am I gonna get out of it when I get into it, which is something you should think about, but at the end of the day, you gotta love a really nice, well to well put together watch. And if you do like a Nautilus or something sporty with nice hard angles, you really can't beat this. Cause look, it's clean, it's classy, the movement's beautiful and GP to me, is one of those. Um, I mean, the the, the name, the, the the brand itself, and you know it. You know, you look at it like it's a it's a high watch making brand, yes. and you know I definitely you know I agree with you. I think it's a marketing issue. I think that this is one of those sleeper brands that ha- just has a negative reputation because of resale value, which I hope changes over time. But you can get this watch for under six thousand dollars, and I just you know think to myself like you can buy a Royal Oak Time only for essentially five times the price. And, you know, this is one of those times where, again, it's just a great watch, good value, um, and, uh, you know, that was beautiful, should, should be, uh, you know, bringing double, you know, double like You could wear this anyway. On the rubber, you put on a leather strap. This is a very versatile, very versatile piece. I'm going to need to take that. Uh, Andale, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, just asked, what was the brand of Brian's watch again? Uh, so the brand is called Norcane, um, and uh, we were actually the first uh, authorized retailer here in the States. So oh, I wow. want to say there's only two currently. Um, so uh, if you have interest in any of the watches or go, look online. Um, you know, maybe I'll bring another one of those, their watches here on the show next week. But I, again, I it's a good friend. He's a very good friend no. of mine, and, you know, it's a very cool uh, thing that they're trying to build. So, um Let's keep it going. Uh, which watch would you like to do next? Ooh, let's do a Seiko. It's okay. just been staring at me. Okay, cool. I don't know. So, um, again, uh, another watch that you know needs no introduction. Here we have an SLA 0025. Uh, this is a Seiko re-edition uh, diver piece that was done. Not, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. Tim probably would have known the yeah, answer. Yeah, I feel like this. it was the year before. But... Uh, I would have been able to give you a lot more information. But overall, just a great sporty watch a little bit thick for me but i think that if you're looking for something that's like very much retro inspired and true to the original design of the watch this is a great option um and you know great price point really well built um and definitely definitely a tool watch that if you're you know that you can be rugged in and enjoy 
Yeah, you could definitely have a lot of fun with it. I think Seiko for me is one of those brands. It's tough because I've sold so many brands but Seiko in my, my years at different retailers. And being here and being able to get my hands on them, I really, really enjoy it. And pieces like this, like you said, you have to know what you're getting into because it is a thicker piece. But it's a beautiful piece. And if you know what you're getting into in terms of the wrist presence, it's actually really, really beautiful. And just even the little touches of gold on the dial and the bezel. I, I love it. I wouldn't say, you know, I'm, I'm the biggest Seiko fan out there. But they every time I pick one up, they win me over little by little. That's for sure. Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, I definitely think that, um, let's call it like the... Um, the, the newness of Grand Seiko and Seiko, I'm sure, is subsiding a little bit, but yeah. I think that each year they're coming out with good releases, and that's really what you want to see from a brand like them, where it doesn't get stagnant, they constantly come out with new things, uh, availability of the good pieces is tight, and I think that if you're looking for a really cool, unique brand that's still somewhat niche, um, it's a good brand to get into. Yeah. Um, and overall, I mean, again, what's pretty funny is, is like if you're in the watch community, you know, and you hear Seiko, you know, now I think like what comes to my mind is Grand Seiko and everything that Grand Seiko represents. Yes. If you're not in the watch community, you're thinking Seiko from the 80s. Exactly. And it's definitely, you know, there's still that at Quartz Crisis stigma, like, oh, the, the Quartz and stuff, but they make such great quality product and there's just such a huge brand. I think we're in this industry where not many brands make you know, $200, $250 watches, and then, you know, nine, dollars $10,000 and up and have such a different range in makes and everything. So it's hard to grass Seiko sometimes, but it's definitely a brand to get into. Very good, to me, a good starter brand because yeah. so many guys around the office have so many tunas and everything, and, uh -huh. and there's so so much to collect to then go into different levels, and then, you know, as you're financially capable, then you branch out into other models. So I think it's a very good starter brand, especially if you're just looking, even just a few hundred bucks, you go vintage, you can find something yeah. really cool. You do a Seiko Turtle, they come out with really cool releases, and, you know, a lot of the, as you said, a lot of the guys at the office are big fans. Um, they've done a really good job of, you know, you know, sort of separating the two now, where yes. they're really trying to make Grand Seiko its own entity and then Seiko its own. But I really like sort of the you know the readditions that Seiko does that captures uh, the attention of like the high end watchmaking community at large. Exactly. And this is you know one of those pieces. And you know we've brought this watch on the show before, me and Tim, and you know have gone into great lengths about this, along with I think I, we had the original at the time. So, um, you know, really cool piece. Um, let's do, let's do the UN. Ooh, so, nice. um, here we go here. So, here we've got a Ulysse Narden uh, Maxi Diver in all black with the black rubber strap. Um, it's got the articulated rubber strap with the titanium inserts. Like, this to me is one of like the best sports watches that's made. And I think that, you know, Ulysse Narden was, let's, you know, was called, it went from an all time high probably to somewhat of a, a low. Uh, and now it's, you know, somewhere back in the middle. It's gaining traction again. They're coming out with really cool releases. We talked about the Freak X uh, after it was edition. launched, which I think is going to do absolutely awesome. It's more um, price sensitive Freak. Um, but if you're looking for a really cool sports watch and you're looking for something somewhat some you know somewhat unique that's available that you can get at a really good price that you know that you're not going to see on everybody's wrists that's made well that you know that people do actually recognize and know what it is and that's not a, you know a Rolex Submariner like this is an absolutely great option and you know like some of the other watches on the table you can transition it out onto a bracelet you've got the rubber strap which can be cut down to size yep which is one of the most comfortable rubber straps that you can own because of the articulated inserts here that make it form fit on whether you have a big wrist or a small wrist. It really um, is really super comfortable. And uh, they've made a, you know quite a few different iterations of the watch, steel, titanium, gold. And I just think that, again, this is another example of a watch that you can pick up at a really good price that has a perceived value of being much higher than what you're spending on the watch. Yeah, and you can just beat this up. I, I think you're really accurate in saying that about you and they were, they were at a really really high point went down a little bit and kind of figured it, their, themselves out but now like i was at the, the un website last night if you look at their current collection of pieces and what they're offering to the market right now really really nice to see because i've been selling un since 2013 actually 2012 and it's really interesting to see them kind of go up and down and right now if you look if you are a un store right now you have actually 
a really good line of watches to sell. Everything, the price point is really, really nice. Of course, there's still the high-end stuff, the super high mode with the Freak X coming at a lower mm -hmm. price point, um, the new chronometers and stuff. Really, really, even the classicals with um, that marine enamel dial, that, that was really beautiful. I think UN, to me, is one of those brands that will always be there and will always keep pushing it forward, not only um, technology-wise, but just mm -hmm. having nice, accessible watches, because you're right. For this price point, you can do anything you want with this watch, and nobody knows what it is. If they do know, they know the quality, but it looks like a very, very higher-end watch than it actually is, and I think UN does the trick. Yeah, I mean, they're made term. extraordinarily well when you actually go over the details right. of the watch, and, you know, they are at the forefront of a lot of technological advances within the watchmaking community, and they come out with great price points. Like, you know, you've got the skeletonized tourbillon that they did that they came out oh, yeah. with, I want to say at 38,000, yep. which at the time for a skeletonized tourbillon was insane. Was insane. It was also a water resistant turb. Um, as we said, the, the Freak X coming out at just over 20,000, I think is going to do really, really well. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, I've always been a huge fan of the watches. You know, so I brought the black one on, but they, you know, they have, you know, obviously quite a few different colors. Blue is probably to me like the most um, the, like if you close your eyes and you think the Maxi Marine. The, the blue pops I think, up. I think the I, you know the blue. I pops always think up, about the titanium the with the white dial yeah. and the orange on. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And what I love before we move off this watch, upside down Cyclops. It just does like nothing like having a magnifying date, but not feeling that Cyclops there. And it's something you don't think about until you play around with a UN and you're like, oh, what, what other brands don't do that? Oh, right. So the, the little things, the little things there. There really aren't any other brand. I mean, again, I'm sure no. Tim, again, would probably yeah, know well, another yeah. brand that does it, but again, I Tim isn't one. here today, okay? So <laughs> exactly. We're not here for perfection. We're here for a good time. Um, so, uh, guys, as, uh, as always, please, if you have any questions about any of the watches that are on the table, please feel free to ask. And if you have any questions on the watch industry in general and or watches in general, again, please feel free to ask. And we are going to keep uh, keep going here. I'm trying to just keep up with the chat. It's like yeah, going, it's the, going the, off the, the chain. The chat's going. Yeah. I, I would say to the one gentleman there, they don't make porn watches. They make artistic, erotic watches. You know, and you should really check them out. They're not too I bad. Love, you know, I know, love, but, you know, love those hey, watches. There, there's a watch for everybody in the world. You got to remember that. But if remember you check out that, that mermaid one they did. Yes, the, the Manamara line, which is excellent. And I will own the one with the great, great white. I think those are such beautiful watches. And again, the price point is under $20,000. they are in steel, mm -hmm. handmade with um the, 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 the Itali Italian uh, cartoonists. And things like that brands aren't doing. Many brands would have made that watch, made it white gold or platinum. Let's call it $80,000. The UN's like, Let's actually sell some watches. Let's not just make things that, that will look nice in the forums. Let's not just make nice watches that look great on magazine. Let, let's make watches that somebody will come in the store and actually buy and mm -hmm. enjoy. It create, and it creates a conversation, which I exactly. think I think which is what a lot of watch buying is now. It's just yes. having something on the wrist that creates a conversation, and you know those watches definitely do that. Um, all right, what should we? Let's let's do the. Uh, well, we just did a rubber strap piece. Let's do the. Uh, here we've got. Explorer. Yeah, let's do the Explorer. Why don't you give this one a go? All right, so this is, oh, you got there. Um, Explorer 2, Black Dial. To me, one of the, um, like if you, if you had to have one watch and you really you know don't know what you, what, what you wanted to get into, but you wanted to be a first watch, I love the Explorer 2s of the older generations. These hold value extremely well and they're probably some of the most like, wearable, fun watches out there just because there's so much character, right? These watches have done so much. You can beat them up, enjoy them, wear it on the bracelet, put it on a, a NATO strap. And you know, I've seen these and the white dial is beautiful, the polar white, but I like the black dials because I don't know, it's a little bit more versatile and I don't know, just something about it I just love. I love watches um, that are a little bit older like this just because they have a character to them. And you could just see, I don't know, it, it kind of speaks to you in a little bit different way. It seems a little bit imperfect if that makes sense at, at certain times, which I really, really love. And again, I've bought and sold so much of these that you know people have worn for like decades and decades and decades comes in, you give it a polish, and it's good good to go. Yeah, so, and it's one of the few steel sport Rolexes now that you can get at, you know, I think still a really good value. Yeah. And not um, lose much money on the trade, to be honest with you. Correct. If you buy it right, like you're not, maybe 15% you're gonna lose on it. They're really, really good. Yeah, so, and you know, it's a great size. I mean, for me personally, you know, it's it's this watch, between this watch and the, and the current version of the watch has the biggest disparity in size of the case. Yes. And this one fits me better than the current version. Uh, you know, I have a slightly smaller wrist. Um, you know, the current version probably fits you a little bit better. It does. You know, we'll, we'll <laughs> um, you okay. But, you know, I've always been a big fan of the reference, and I think that this is one of those watches, you know, that's definitely seen an increase in its, uh, you know, in the price as the Rolex market itself has boomed. 100%. But I think that it's a, a, it's a watch that uh, 
again, if you're looking for a sub $6,000 steel sport Rolex uh, that's sporty and still a modern look, this is going to be one of the few, the few options. Um, and guys, regarding the chat, if you're trolling the chat, honestly, like one of the coolest features of the live show is people being able to, you know, ask questions. If you're just going to come in and troll the chat, you're just going to be booted off the chat. So, you know, please, if you're just going to troll, you know, keep it off the chat and let guys that want to ask questions, ask questions. Please Let's keep going. Interact. Oh, what's next? Um, uh, we didn't plan to match great minds think alike and you know, not farm sure. <laughs> Uh, so let's do another throwback piece. Again, another, um, you know, so this is one that we, you know, we've really, you know, I've not brought one on the show before. Um, and it's a watch that you really, uh, you know, a watch that you really don't see as often anymore. Uh, but here we have an old school Tudor sub. So we're going to get uh, a video on it. So this watch was, uh, you know, I think that you could see what this watch was paying homage to when yeah. it was being produced. Um, you know, but overall, obviously, the watch looks like, uh, you know, a Rolex Mariner. Um, you even have the stainless steel Rolex bracelet there that's stamped. You've got Rolex stamped on the case back. So this is one of those old school oh, uh, Tudor yeah. subs. Um, obviously, again, Tim would probably be going into much more about the watch. But for me, one of the really cool things about the watch is, like, number one, you know, obviously, vintage is in, yeah. which, you know, brings this watch absolutely to the forefront. Number two, Tudor's never been stronger than it is right now. Rolex has never been stronger than it is right now. And I just think that if you're looking for a really cool, uh, you know, a really cool, you know, let's call it, you know, this is vintage now, because it is, uh, vintage watch um, that you can get at a good price that's got that Rolex vibe to it, like this is gonna be, you know, that watch. And you could take it off the bracelet, you could put it on like a, you know, like an oh, yeah. aftermarket exactly. cool strap, Black and white um, you know, and really change the look. But I think like, these are the types of watches, you know, that are out there right now that I think are like the next, uh, you know, the next pieces to buy, because I think that, you know, they only have upward potential and they're still available at a good price. Exactly. You still can find them at really good prices. This particular one is actually super clean. The dial on it is, is really nice. And just like you're saying, there's so many great brands out there. Sometimes you get pigeonholed to think in one brand, but this gives you the Submariner look because it is a Submariner, uh, but just has a little bit more feel. Like the dial has a little bit more oomph to it. The, the marker is a little bit bigger on it. And it just gives you something a little bit different while still having something that holds great value you something that again you can beat this you know up to the moon and back and it still will actually look and operate really really beautifully i think tudor is is getting super strong um as it slowly always has kind of been going since it yeah. came back to the u.s since a modern tudor has come back older tudors start going up I actually just got offered uh, i think a slow, snowflake the other day and there's still so many great tutors out in just like yard sales and estate sales. Yeah, because like, because at the time what's crazy is is like the big the biggest reason that Tudor failed originally when it came into the States was that it tried to be a lesser you know, it was positioned as a lesser Rolex. Yeah. Okay, you you know, you can't afford a Samaritan or get a Tudor. And this time around it's completely different. Like Tudor is the Tudor is the offshoot that is able to experiment with materials. Exactly. Is able fun. to do vintage inspired watches. Is able to have fun. Is able to create watches at a you know a completely different price point. Yep. Um, is able to go f way back into their line and bring something back. Is able to do bronze watches. And I just think that like this kind of watch right here is like really just a time capsule, and it shows you how f how big of a difference there is in the brand now from what it was. Um, but it's also really cool because again. You know, it's a it's a conversation piece. I mean, with you've got you know the Rolex crown here on the case back, you've got it on on the bracelet, and you just see how different the errors were when you see you know nowadays just how protective of you know Rolex is of the brand. Just you know it, what what it was like back then. Like you could get bezels and bracelets and swap it, them around, crazy. and it's just you know it's it's very it's crazy. cool to see. There, there there was a time where like like you were saying like even for Rolex, if you had a like a day just you could get any dial you wanted on it. You could swap things out. And this does goes back to that time of Rolex being a little bit more loose and having a little bit more fun. Mm -hmm. But it's really interesting because I'd say Tudor in the last 10 years has had more model changes and introduction than, than the Rolex brand has, yeah. right? And, and definitely has have more fun, but the quality is still there. So definitely a brand to go into. And really, like, think about that. You There's so many of these are just out in yard sales, you know, people haven't, they didn't know what they were buying 20, 30 years that ago. That the yard sales that You know, and that are in perfect condition. I, remember I bought uh, two snowflakes um, six months ago that, you know, it was a his and her set, and they're, you know, they just didn't want watches, and they, they, they cashed it in, went on a cruise, you know, around the world. You know, so never so be afraid. Uh, I wish, you know, sometimes I pop out there. Pop okay, a couple there. questions from the chat. Um, Harald Jublog, AP Offshore Divers, good value now or not worth looking at? Uh, I think good value now. I mean, honestly, I think that... 
Um, you know, and another question in the chat, you know, I'll parlay it back into this, but, you know, from Hishab Habib, hey, Brian and CQ, do you guys think that the trend of small watches is coming back? So I do think the trend of smaller watches is coming back. You know, do I think it's going back to 36 or even 38? No. But I think that it's trending back down and really settling at a, let's call it 39 to 42 millimeter size. I see so. And that guys want to watch, um, you know, that you can transition from play to work. We've called it beach to tux on this show before, but something that you can wear all the time, something that could be dressed up, dressed down, that's, you know, slim, slimmer profile, um, which is why, again, the Royal Oaks have done really well. The Nautiluses have done really well. Rolexes in general have done really well. And I think that... Um, the AP divers and even the bigger offshore 44s have somewhat fallen into that category of being a little bit too big. Now, if you want a bigger watch, you gotta know your wrist. Yeah, you, know? you gotta know your wrist. But if you want a bigger watch, you know, Paddock's really not making a bigger watch that's satisfying the guy that's buying a 44 millimeter piece. No, it's very hard. So, you know, your really option really only is that 44 millimeter offshore, or you know, let's call it a really big gold Rolex or a Yacht Master Two or something exactly. like that. But overall, yeah, you know, you're pinpointing AP, you're pinpointing the 44, and that's great. But you've got this diver that's somewhere in the middle that I, you know, that I think that the diver prices right now are probably a little bit repressed. I think yeah. now if you do want to buy a diver, now is probably Probably the time to buy one um, and I think that there's a lot of different iterations that are available right now and I would Definitely love to see a, a thinner diver like I would love to That'd see instead of a 42 I'd love to see a 41 a 40 Ooh. to 41 millimeter thinner diver that's like in between a Royal Oak and an offshore to me would be that perfect blend like they need the Aquanaut exactly they really do they need an Aquanaut because it's wearable and you know the crazy thing about Aquanaut you know when I first started selling watches I was selling Brightland so I was very into like Super Avengers of 48 millimeter and we had that paddock um, boutique there and I go and I'd be like oh there's really nothing there I could couldn't really find then I tried on a 5960 I was like this has a thickness and then I went to an Aquanaut and I tried it on I was like wow you know I'm a bigger guy but you can see how Aquanaut actually is nice it feels really good on the wrist and you can wear it I think it's very important to actually know your wrist um, I, if you know what can go on your wrist like I, you know I'm seven and a half inches but I can go down to 36 on the right watch you got to try watches on and don't get stuck in one category just because your your friend likes big watches doesn't mean you have to go like big watches because your friend likes small watches doesn't mean you have to go down that route you have to really try on a few different watches and see what goes on um on your wrist and also it's also about the thickness and the wrist presence because I've, I've definitely seen some watches that are like 31 32 that i've seen on, on a gentleman's wrist and it's like oh wow i could see see that you know worn every day nobody really knows the difference again it's about what you like but i, I would not be afraid to go on a small one. i'd wear a 34 if it's the right 34 yeah, you know it, it just same. really you know, depends on the watch itself and how it looks and how it feels and everything like that and lugs play a big role you know how far do the lugs extend out you know like there's you know we've brought watches on the show before which are 36 the lugs send out pretty far um you know the i'd say the um you know, the Breguet Marine watch is prime example. Like, yes. you know, you, they, they're 40 millimeter cases, but they fit probably closer to a 41 or 42 just because of the the way that the lugs, uh, yeah. you know, curve down. I, and so I think that, again, it's it's, it's a watch by watch. Yeah. Even like when AP, um, the 42 millimeter officers, people were calling those 44s for the longest while just because the thickness of it made it feel mm -hmm. like a 44. And uh, to answer the chat, I will be doing a show on the, um, the, the CQ? CQs. Oh. By the uh, way, I'm a bit, I think that watch, so a win, lot of the Swatch group like launches, and we haven't talked about it yet on the show. Money. But like, you know, the Blanc Pond Barracuda. Fire. Like, fire. Like, would I have liked the date window maybe have been a different color? Like, okay, kind like, of we talked thing. about it kind of, but like, I like that they have it on there. But like, the watch, awesome. The Chrono that they came out with, awesome. The CQ by Gulshu, I really want to um, get it in, in my person. hands. It will be here very soon. Um, that, that but I, again, I think awesome. And I just think like, you know, again, like they're keeping with what they're good at. You know, these somewhat, you know, not quite vintage, but not quite just super contemporary watches that, um, have a really cool, unique look. Um, yeah. I think, and I think you know, I think price point also ends up being you know a, a key factor. Exactly, um, it's a quality, it's a quality watch, yeah. it's a quality manufacturer. Because the you know, CQ is going to be the same price as I think it's eighty five hundred. Yeah, I think, exactly. it's, I think not... it's the same price as a sub. So I mean, again, like if you if you want a sport watch that's slightly different, that's interesting, that you're probably not going to see on all five of your friends' wrists. Yeah. Represent CQ. It's, it's a good option. CQ. You need you need that watch. I, I will get a I'm gonna get a sponsorship deal. I think I'm gonna make it happen. Um, okay, what else do we have here on the table? Um, um, let's do, let's, we'll end with, we'll end with the Omega, let's do the, the IWC. IWC. So, um, you know, IWC, um, is that zero time left? Okay, well, we're gonna, we're going overtime, overtime. So, we'll do one more watch. So, 
here we've got an IWC Aquatimer. Um, again, a line from a brand that I think doesn't get enough love. We've brought like the old school ones on the show before. Here we've got a 42 millimeter stainless steel Aquatimer. Um, you know, to me, like one of my favorite features of the watch is um, I'm very particular about the rubber strap that's on a watch. Like I don't really like a stiff rubber strap. Like I think it almost makes it too much like a bracelet. Yes. So this has a really soft rubber strap. It's super flexible. It form fits to the wrist. So it's exactly what I want out of a rubber strap. And I love like green loom. Like I love loom that yeah. looks like loom. And I just, you know, I don't know if it's for everybody, but like I would love if the entire watch had that on there. So that'd be fire if it was like an all green loom, just like green monster out there. So I'm just, you know, I, I, I think that the watch itself the size fits slightly smaller than a 42 because it, it fits me as well as some of my smaller watches. Um, I love the overall look of the watch. Price point wise, again, you're sub 5,000. You can get these watches at a really good price pre-owned. Um, really soft rubber strap. You've got the ability to order the bracelet um, you know, if you want to. And you know, I just think it's a unique sport watch that you still don't see on that many people's wrists. And when you do, like, That's when I see point. this on somebody's wrist, like, you just know he's a watch guy. Exactly. You, you're so Mike, you did a little bit of homework. Did a, cause you're right. I haven't seen this on too many or different versions on too many wrists. And there's so many cool different versions out there. I think IWC is another brand as well, doing really good in rearranging the collection, small, small batch editions, and the pieces that people actually want versus pieces. There's some brands out there just. You know, you could tell a lot of designers get in the rooms like, oh, what, what can be groundbreaking, what can be cool, but again, it has to be a watch that looks good and a watch that you enjoy. And a great point about the rubber straps, not many people think about it, but a strap makes a watch. Same thing with the UN, those pivots right there, when you when, when that watch is sized perfectly, it fits like a glove and you mm -hmm. do not, you don't even think about it. You don't think about it. And I remember when the, and I wish I had a photo of it, when the Galapagos first came out with the all black rubber case yeah. and it was just like, minds exploding yeah. right like that you know and it was like a completely different era the, you know the sport watch craze was really just sort of coming on in a different way aqua timers were booming it was yeah. like that one line from them where it was like they were selling like hot cakes exactly. um, price, price and too. you know the watch was just so cool it was articulated rubber over the entire you know span of the case and you know at the end of the day like you know it, sometimes when you buy a watch and you can't refinish it like it's you know what are you going to do but such you know such a cool watch such a cool look the texture the feel of the case and like again one of those watches when i still see it to this day just you know gives me the chills looking at it that's cool piece um okay let me see here so jbo surf hello welcome back new omega c master 300 is very nice rubber straps um you know what we'll end on one more watch just because he said that from the chat so i don't have the rubber strap but I do have the bracelet version here. So here we have the brand new Omega Seamaster 300M. I think I may have brought the rubber strap version on either last episode or the episode before, but here we've got the blue ceramic. This is the new version of the watch. And again, to me, like at sub 5,000, like I don't know how much better the watch could possibly be at that. Like it's just ceramic bezel, um, you know, Meta certified movement, like the, the watch is freaking gorgeous. You've got the ability to transition from the bracelet into really cool rubber straps. Like, you know, if you had to ask me like what brand is doing everything right, right now, like Omega is that brand. Yeah. I'd say the, the only thing Omega ever does wrong is, is they, there's so many models to just so many great watches to choose from. But with this, it just shows that again, they couldn't price this crazy or like, you know, do whatever, but it, it does what it, it, it want, you want it to do. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful in the blue. It looks beautiful in the black. There's so many different versions. And again, you could do anything you want with this watch and enjoy life and not be fragile with it, not be delicate with it. What I really loved about selling Omega um, in the in the islands is that I was able to sell you a diving watch. You could go to the beach with it, go have fun and enjoy yourself, and you know not not have to worry about it. And that's what I really really like about um, these pieces. And their new stuff is just. I don't know, their, the new releases they just did were pretty cool too. And I think Omega is one of those brands that, it, it didn't slow down, it, it kind of got, there was so much things going on, there was a lot of noise around, but being that they did their release just a while ago, I think it was a really great move for them. And um, definitely a brand that I would not mind. I might pick this up, this is nice. It's awesome, right? That's you should nice. definitely pick that up. Do you like the black or blue better? I definitely think I like the blue. <sighs> It's, I, hard, it's, I, hard, it's hard though. I, I like the blue because the black like the to waves. me, like if you were, if you were to say like okay, you could only ever have one watch ever again. Like to me, I think the black, but the blue is like the one my heart tells me to have. Yeah, I might get the older version in, in black if I did it. Yeah. Um, okay, so guys, that is all that we have on the show tonight. Really appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, so CQ guys, 
please, you know, if you want CQ to come back, leave some good comments in the chat because he's definitely going to be spending all night reading those. Yes, um, best bared on YouTube watches. There's another guy out there. I just want to know that I'm back for the mantle, best bared in, in the watch game right now. <laughs> um, but uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, my name is Brian. And I'm CQ. This is the Watch Insider, and thank you guys for logging on. Thank you.